Hello and welcome! Today we're gonna go over some rules of thumb that are useful when flying. First up, the 1 in 60 rule that says if you're 60 miles away from something and you're 1 degree off track, you're 1 mile next to the track. Now of course if you play with those numbers a little, if you're 30 miles away from a point and 2 degrees off track, you're also 1 mile next to the track. Now of course this only works on small arcs up to around about 4 degrees but you can use it in other scenarios as well. For example, if you have two radar contacts at 60 miles that are 4 degrees apart, they're 4 miles apart as well, so probably not in a 1 mile combat spread. Now, next up is descending for an airport, and I know a lot of people in DCS just like to fly directly over the airport, dive bomb down to it, and then attempt the landing from right overhead, but well, there's actually a more efficient way to calculate when you should start your descent, and that is 30 per 10 plus 10. So for every 10,000 feet that I'm in the air, I'm going to take 30 miles to descent and then add another 10 miles on top of that for deceleration. So at a normal cruise altitude of around 30,000 feet, I'm going to take 3 times 30 miles to descent plus another 10, adding up to a total of 100 miles. Add to that another 1 to 5 miles to get established on glide slope and fly down the glide slope and we're starting our descent 1 1 5 miles before the airport. For the glide slope itself, we're now going to use a variation of the 1 and 60 rule, which is 3 degree glide slope equals 300 feet per nautical mile. Therefore, for a normal ILS approach from 3000 feet, we need to be 1 zero miles out. And from there you can calculate the altitude of the glide slope at any distance, and that is, for example, a way how you can use a Tarkan for your instrument approach. Now onto the rate of descent, how you actually maintain that glide slope. Your rate of descent in feet per minute should be your ground speed times 5. So if you're on the glide slope with 120 knots and your 61 rule has shown you that you're slightly too high, you need to descend with more than 600 feet per minute. Next up, slant range. Now when we're overflying a Tarkan or a DME, it will never show zero unless we're actually flying on ground level. But what will the DME show once we're right above it? Well, right now we're right above Batumi at 30,000 feet and we still see 5 miles. And that is because one nautical mile is roughly 6,000 feet. Therefore, for every 6,000 feet in the air, we'll have a distance to the DME of one nautical mile. Now, last but not least, speed. More specifically, ground speed, which is really crucial if we have to meet time on target. Now, we're lucky in the Tomcat, the ground speed is actually displayed. Now, all we need is distance to our next waypoint, and we can start calculating. Divide your current ground speed by 60, and you know how many miles a minute you're making at 360 knots ground speed you're making 6 miles a minute at 600 knots ground speed you're making 10 miles a minute so if your next waypoint is 72 nautical miles away and you'll have to meet your time on target in 9 minutes you'll have to make 8 nautical miles a minute and your rear will be screaming at you to do 480 knots ground speed now you know why Rio swapped his pistol for a calculator alright I really hope you found this helpful I'll link a website in the description where you can read all this again. Till next time.